Hello, my name is Odette Batarel. I am visually impaired. I am a member of Croydon Vision. I live in Croydon and I would like to tell you a little bit about my experience of cycling in London and Croydon and out and about as a visually impaired um, cyclist riding on a tandem. Just to give you a little bit of background, I was sighted when I was a child and would cycle a lot, play, on, play in France in a village with my bicycle. I would go to school with my bicycle. Later, I went to live for a couple of years in Austria. I had my bicycle as well. And when I came to England in around um, 1984, I would occasionally rent a bicycle uh, while uh, going out, uh, maybe in the Lake District or in the New Forest. And I could cycle quite, cycle quite happily. Uh, I became visually impaired, uh, severely sight impaired, uh, lost the center of my vision through um, Stargardt's disease, and uh, I could not ride my bicycle anymore. I could probably ride in a very safe environment, but um, I would like, I really like to cycle out in the countryside and um, traveling, exploring new places, and just going on a very safe circuit w would not satisfy me in a way. So um, I met um, Merton as a sports and social club for the blind, and um, uh, had a first go at riding a tandem. So they showed me how to ride, uh, how to, you know, how to stop, how to start, and and uh, how it worked as a as a back rider, so to speak. And um, I think uh, I wasn't quite sure at first if riding, you know, cycling behind somebody would be very interesting or would be uh, would be fun. I just didn't know, but I thought, okay, I, I will give it a go. And I think my biggest surprise is that what I didn't realize, what I had missed really, is the feeling of speed. The wind on your face, the wind on your body, this feeling of going somewhere, of speeding. And that's what I really found was really, really fun um, uh, riding on a, on a bicycle again. Later on, I met with uh, Wheels for Wellbeing, and one of the ladies there, Abigail, said, Odette, why don't we ride the Prudential, the, the 46 Prudential ride? And uh, we got training together, so after work she'd meet up with me, and we'd cycle around London and try and do kind of longer and longer circuits because I hadn't, I hadn't really cycled much at all. So I needed to, to build my muscles and my stamina up. And that was quite scary in a sense because we were riding around Brixton, Stockwell, we went uh, around um, the city and there's a lot of cars, a lot of buses, a lot of other cyclists and although I can't see them so well, I still can feel the kind of um, uh, hassle, the stress, the kind of pressure of, 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 of the traffic around me. But we did the Prudential ride and that was a fantastic experience. I had never, never taken part in such a, an amazing uh, event. It's a bit like a marathon for, for cyclists. And there were thousands and thousands of cyclists and we did meet a few other tandems. I think there were about 10 taking part and some, of, some people I knew, so it was quite fun to, to meet up with them. But it was just so amazing to take part to 
to cycle through London, through all the kind of famous bits of London, through the city and Richmond Park, Wimbledon, and, and through and arriving in front of Buckingham Palace. And there was no traffic. They had closed all the roads. So that was an amazing experience. And as a tandem, we got lots of attention. People say, ooh, a tandem. Ooh, oh, look, 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 a tandem. So we got a lot of, a lot of uh, attention from the crowd. And um, of course, behind, I could let go of the handlebar and, and wave. And, and that was very fun. That was a, a fantastic experience. And then um, I wanted to continue to ride, you know, having such, such fun. And uh, so I, I asked my husband and say, husband, Jean, would you, would you want to ride with me? And we didn't have a tandem. Uh, so, uh, but first we had to, to find out if, if that was the thing for him, because obviously we had to, before buying anything, we wanted to make sure that we could ride together. So we went back to Merton uh, social, Sports and Social uh, Club for the Blind, and they took my husband, so they took him round, around the streets by himself, and then they took me, and then they put us together. And uh, so we were starting to, you know, to sort of ride. And then the chap said, um, so let's see how you stop. Okay, one, two, three, stop. And we both put our right foot down because we're both French. And he said, no, 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 you've just put your foot in the traffic. He said, in England, you have to put your left foot down. So habits die hard. Um, so... Uh, we enjoyed it. It was really good. It was a great teamwork. We had to, you know, when you stop, one, two, three, stop. And then I had to sort of say, OK, I'm putting the pedal ready. And then when the traffic light went green, one, two, three, go. And so we'd have, we'd build up this really nice communication. And I really trusted my, my husband. I feel he's a really safe and sensible uh, driver. So um, it was good. I mean, at first, it was really hard to sort of uh, give the whole control to your front rider because uh, you can't brake, you can't steer, they've got to do it all. You have to totally trust them. So that's, that's something, I wouldn't want anybody to be my front rider. I would have to feel that I can trust that person, feel that they're going to ride safely, uh, feel that we can communicate, feel they're not going to go mad or wild or go too fast or too far for me. Um, I think I would really need to, to feel there's a good team communication to feel comfortable and enjoy myself. So my husband and I decided to do the next Prudential ride together. So we asked um, Merton Vision for a tandem. They lent us a tandem. We had to try and, and uh, uh, kind of change a few times the saddles so they would fit us and, um, uh, so, and to maintain the bike to make sure the bike was in good nick for the, the Prudential ride. And we did the Prudential ride and that was, that was that was very fun. That was good. We had a, a great time again. And again, had lots of attention as a tandem. And we, um, we tried a few tandems with Charlotte tandem. And we, tr we tried a few friends that were selling tandems. But we kind of couldn't really find a tandem we really wanted that would suit both my husband, who's quite taller than me, and myself. And one of the things we found out is that to get out of Croydon, um, to put it, it's really hard. You, you actually are not allowed to put a tandem on a train. And to get out of uh, uh, Croydon with all the big roads, the motorways, to go out in the countryside, you have to cycle quite a long time. And we're not really, um, uh, you know, we're not kind of champions, we're not super sporty, we're fairly fit, but we wanted to have a nice ride, not a grueling, hard ride like the Prudential ride. We wanted to enjoy it, to go to a pub or a restaurant and, and to enjoy the countryside. So um, we, 
my husband actually spotted a folding tandem. So we then kind of started to inquire. And I went to an event run by uh, London Sports, I believe. And they were looking at increasing uh, and creating a network of uh, sports for disabled people in London, or mostly in the, the south of London. So it would include like um, uh, definitely Lambeth, Southwark, Croydon, uh, Wandsworth, kind of those areas. And uh, I met there a person from Pedal My Wheel who were doing a pitch there. And basically they will um, uh, source and purchase a bicycle for you and you will pay them bit by bit. And if it wasn't for you, you can give the bicycle back. And by the end of the payments, the bicycle would be yours. So I said to them, well, I'm looking for a folding tandem. I don't know where to find one. And they sourced one for us. And it was £2,000. So we then had a payment plan. And I'm paying for my tandem bit by bit. And we were the first adapted bike. That, that scheme was um, uh, sort of... Uh, uh, paying for and well, so that was really fun to also be the first one and our folding tandem we've been to lots of places we've folded it up put it on the train we've been to Brighton we did the Crab and Winkle trail from um, uh, Canterbury we went to a beer festival and during the lockdown we went to Beddington Park to play tennis because I do uh, blind tennis and we've used it to go shopping we have two hens so we have to buy some feed for the hens so we went to the pets at home with our tandem we've been to Morrison to Sainsbury so we use our tandem to go shopping sometimes and we can't put a lot of shopping but you know just to do a bit of exercise and do a bit of shopping um, and we went to also blackberry picking we had a uh, I think we managed to get about 12 pots of jams out of it. So that was fun. That was good. And uh, yes, oh yes, one thing I forgot to say is that before the Prudential ride, we also used Croydon Arena to train to get our, our stamina because at that point we didn't have a tandem. So to train to get our muscles in, in, in order to pedal, uh, we, we trained a few times there with um, the wheels for well-being adapted cycling sessions. So that was, that was good. Uh, what I hope to do, uh, oh yes, and a few other things, is that I'm looking to maybe take the, the tandem abroad, uh, but it, it feels, seems very difficult. I haven't yet found really how to do it. Um, so we went to visit my brother, who's in the south of Paris, and we did a big trail on the Loire, canal and it's part of the Compostelle trail from um, the sort of pelig pilgrimage, pilgrimage uh, walk that you go all the way to Compostelle in Spain and so part of that is on the canal on the Loire canal and we, we did um, 50 kilometers and, and we stayed overnight and then came back and that we rented a, a tandem there. It wasn't perfect because, again, it's not our tandem. It's not really adapted to our legs, our arms, our weights. But, you know, it was better than nothing. And another tandem that we, um, we rented out on holiday was near Saint Malo, uh, where my parents live. And for a long weekend, we rented a tandem. But that was a kind of a chunky beach tandem. So again, it wasn't ideal to go up hills. We had to put our feet, you know, we had to walk a few times. It was one of those kind of um, very heavy and chunky beach tandem. But again, if I hadn't been able to rent it out, I wouldn't have been able to cycle. So um, that was another, another fun adventure. So I hope in the future, what I would like is to be able to join a group 
of tandem riders and to be able to to cycle um, to cycle around you know the kind of uh, uh, southeast of of England around London and in Kent or Surrey and then also go on holidays. One of my friends uh, was blind. She went with Sea uh, Able Holiday, so they help blind people go on holiday. And they went to Lanzarote, and they had a cycling, um, they had a cycling a tandem session there. So yeah, that's something I would really like to be able to do: to go abroad and do a few cycling holidays with our tandem. Now I think that. One of the, having sort of met other people who are blind and visually impaired, some of the barriers to riding a tandem is actually to find a front rider. I'm really lucky. My husband can cycle. Um, we, we kind of were matched. Um, he's the heavy, tall and strong person, so he can hold the tandem while I'm sitting on the tandem. I don't think we'd be able to do it the other way around. He would be too heavy for me as a back rider. So uh, I'm lucky. But if I hadn't had my, my husband, or if at some point for any reason, my husband would not be able to, um, to be my front rider, I actually wouldn't really know where to look for a front rider. Now, I know that, for example, Sport England or Run England have devised a database of guide runners. So if you want somebody to help you do a park run or an athletic event or just do a jog in the park or somewhere near you, you go on their website, you put your postcode in, and they have trained a number of um, guide runners of how to guide a blind person running. And some of my friends use that database and not all are totally blind. So sometimes you just need somebody running next to you and just saying, oh, slow down, come a bit to the right, a bit to the left. Or if somebody really needs a tether, they can be uh, attached to one another. But for a tandem, uh, you kind of need to know a little bit how heavy or how tall the person is. And uh, if, you know, if they're going to communicate, you have to trust them. But it would be fantastic if we could have a, a, a kind of database of, guy, of sort of front runners or then have a club because within a club, you know, you might sort of change front riders. So you would have like a, a number of trusted people you could have actually call on if you on a sunny Sunday afternoon you could sort of ring around and say are you free would you would you like to you know go out for a ride for a couple of hours or um, oh hey there's a beer festival in Rygate would you come with me of course what we've done with my husband is that we would ride to the beer festival and have a few beers but come back with the train. So when we went, so you can do things like that where you do half and half. That allows you to have a bit of a drink and a bit of food and um, that kind of thing. Or um, So a club would be really nice and also finding the trails. Sometimes we, we try to find the national cycling route. I think that goes near, um, near Croydon. I think it's the route 21 or 22. I can't remember now. And it was really hard to find. So um, I haven't really found a good map of, um, uh, of uh, sort of uh, cycling routes. Or, or, or circus. For example, when I go rambling with my husband, I would lay out the map. I would go uh, with my finger, let's go there. So I can't see where there is. He would look up the name of the village where my finger was on. I can Google, uh, say, Godstone Circular Walk. And I'm pretty sure to find a walk to print the map and go by train or by car and do the circular walk. I can't do that with my bicycle. I'd really like to be able to Google circular cycle rides around Seven Oaks or around Rygate or around Brighton. And then to be able to kind of have routes like that, maybe that 
you'd need to ride a little bit on the road and then a little bit on trails and have, you know, kind of different rides. That would be very, very useful to have. The other thing I find also quite difficult is that the maintenance of the bike, um, I know a regular bike is 50 pounds. I thought that 50 pounds is a lot of money, really, to maintain a bike, just to check it over. I would kind of understand if there was, um, how do you say, repairs to do, but 50 pounds to repair a bike is quite a lot. So maybe a club could help with that. So we'd have a maintenance guy. Maybe we could bring somebody in and they could maintain all the, the, the tandems as a group. That would be really nice. Um, uh, insurance, I'm not too sure about insurance. Again, that might be something a club could help with. Also, routes, you know, we could share. Oh, look, there's a, this trail is really good or this is really difficult. And so, again, with a, with a club or a group of people, you kind of pool information and pool support. Or if my husband was ill, for example, or he, he wasn't available, you know, I could actually, you know, uh, phone in and phone somebody and say, oh, do you want to ride? So that kind of thing would be very useful. So I think that um, uh, cycling, tandem riding, is a fantastic uh, uh, activity for couples who are blind, for one of them is blind, one of them is sighted, or to make friends, to keep fit, to go out of London, to go in the countryside, to explore England, to get to know, you know, pubs and restaurants. It's a bit like rambling in a way. And also, you know, to go on holiday, to go on active holidays. So I would highly recommend tandem riding to anyone because also you can do it fairly um, slowly. You can go at your own pace. We don't race around. We just go our own leisurely place where there's a pretty view. We stop and have a look. And um, when we feel tired, we, we stop and we have a little drink, a little chocolate, a bit of extra calories, a little snack. So it's very leisurely and um, it's good fun. It's really good fun. I hope this... Um, this story has been uh, useful and inspiring and has given you um, uh, an idea of how uh, a blind person um, has experienced cycling in Croydon and out in the countryside and abroad. Don't tell me how it's not recording. Yeah.